It's Jehovah's desire that people come to his house and be refreshed and educated. It is our prayer that this new and thrilling visitor's center will accomplish that. Guests will come, they will be upbuilt, and they will draw closer to Jehovah God. Now let's uh, listen to our brother Mark Sanderson as he speaks to us on the subject, share it with the generation to come. Brother Sanderson. At Matthew 13, verse 52, so to be clear, we've just been watching the original streamed footage of the 2022 annual meeting of the Watchtower Bible and Tract Society of Pennsylvania. Again, an elite event in the Jehovah's Witness calendar, kind of their Apple launch for any new initiatives or publications or new light teachings, new understandings of the scriptures. You'll have seen very clearly David Splain come to the lectern after this video featuring Paul Gillies, who's a governing body helper, and then introduce Mark Sanderson. And you actually see David Splain and Mark Sanderson change places on the podium. So David Splain exits the stage and Mark Sanderson walks onto the stage and speaks at the same lectern. It's That's the original, unedited version of the annual meeting. That's what actually happened if you were in the audience at the annual meeting. But as I was explaining earlier in this rebuttal, what the organisation has somehow thought was a good idea to do <laughs> They've decided it's a good idea to retroactively edit the event to include a talk by Ken Flodine, which, as we're going to see, is a, a bizarre, hateful, vitriolic talk that targets gay people. I'll just put the spoiler out there right to begin with. But let's first of all just dissect this bizarrely disingenuous way of retroactively changing what supposedly happened at a Jehovah's Witness event. This is how that same part of the meeting now appears on JW Broadcasting. It's Jehovah's desire that people come to his house and be refreshed and educated. It is our prayer that this new and thrilling visitor's center will accomplish that. Guests will come, they will be upbuilt, and they will draw closer to Jehovah God. I'm sure we can hardly wait to go through that new visitor center. I know I can hardly wait. Now we're going to enjoy two talks on very encouraging themes. The first is by Brother Kenneth Cook. His subject, the earth that will endure forever. Brother Cook, please. In the revelation presented to the Apostle John, Jesus pointed ahead uh, many together. That is the earth that will endure forever. We appreciated that encouragement very much. Thank you, Ken. Now, on another positive note, let's listen as our brother Mark Sanderson speaks to us on the subject, Share It with the Generation to come. Mark, please. At Matthew 13, verse 52. Jesus now let's uh, listen to our brother Mark Sanderson as he speaks to us on the subject, share it with the generation to come. Brother Sanderson. At 
At Matthew 13, verse 52. Isn't that bizarre? Why have they done that? So, obviously, to clarify, I've had to edit, just for the sake of time, like all of Kenneth Cook's talk, out of this particular clip, just so you can see the way the talks were introduced. And I've repeated at the end the original footage so you can compare and contrast more quickly and easily. But unmistakably, what's happened is they've again doctored their own event and pretended that a talk was given at the annual meeting by Kenneth Cook titled The Earth That Will Endure Forever when that actually didn't happen. I'm just flabbergasted that they've done this because I can't think of a logical reason for it. I, you know, I try to put myself in their shoes, albeit that's quite difficult because <laughs> who's to guess what deluded cult leaders uh, have going through their befuddled minds at any given moment. But I try to imagine things from their perspective and, and reason as to why they would do this. And I honestly just come up empty because if they want to have a talk, have Kenneth Cook give a talk that's bashing gay people, they can do that in a JW Broadcasting episode or in a Governing Body update or in a morning worship or in any number of ways. That If they absolutely need to get that message out there, they can easily do it. They have JW Broadcasting at their disposal. Why pretend to have had this talk in an event where, where the talk never took place? And especially, why do this when it's not like you can cover your tracks? Because again, the event was streamed. So there would have been thousands of people in attendance both at the event itself and tied in at various other locations and watching via the stream link that I and others had. So every single one of this vast audience of thousands of people who watch the actual event live or have a recording of the event can easily see what's happened and they're seeing David Splain doing this fake sequence where he is introducing a talk and adding comments about how much he can't wait to go and see this new visitor center, adding all of that sort of stuff, talking to a pretend audience that isn't there because it's a pickup shot. It's being filmed after the fact in such a way as to look as though he's speaking in front of a live audience when he isn't. I'm just flabbergasted, viewers, that they've done it this way. I'm not surprised in the slightest that they need to spout anti-gay propaganda. They've been doing this for years. It's their favourite toy. They just cannot let go of this particular issue. And unfortunately, I think there'll be m much more anti-LGBTQ plus material being pumped out by this organization in the months and years ahead. But as to why they've done this and edit their own event, doctor their own event retroactively, I've got nothing.